Hi everyone, in this video we will be looking at what precipitations are and be discussing the solubility rules which help us to predict what the products of a precipitation reaction are. We will also be going through neutral species, total ionic and net ionic equations as the different types of equations you will need to learn to express precipitation reaction. Here is our syllabus dot point. As we discussed in the physical and chemical change video, precipitation is the formation of a solid when mixing solutions and it is an indicator of chemical reaction. The solution will appear to be cloudy, and it can be colored, which in this case is yellow. The example here on the right is a reaction between lead ions and iodide ions to form the yellow substance lead iodide. Precipitation reaction has the general equation, solution A plus solution B is going to form an insoluble salt plus solution C. These precipitation reactions will occur when the ions of the dissolved salts are going to react with one another to form the insoluble salt. In the image, we can see that solution 1 contains A and B ions. Solution 2, which is next to it, contains C ions and D ions. When these ions are mixed together, the A plus cation from solution 1 and the D minus anion of solution 2 will react with one another to form the solid substance AD which we see on the bottom here. Meanwhile, B- and C+, plus will not react with one another and will remain in solution to have B- and C+, plus ions. However, why is it the case that A and D form a solid, but B and C do not form a solid? This is where we need to consider the solubility rules. Whether or not a precipitation is going to occur will depend on the solubility of the formed salt. So in this case, when we react all of these ions together, AD has low solubility, hence why we describe it as being insoluble and it is in the solid state. BC, however, is aqueous and thus remains in its ionized form in water. The solubility rules are going to determine which pair of ions precipitate, and we can use it to predict the outcome of a precipitation reaction. Here are the general solubility rules for soluble compounds. So the solubility table describes to us which ionic substance containing which ions are soluble in water. The left side of this table tells us which types of compounds are soluble, and on the right, exceptions to that rule. So for example, all compounds which contain group 1 metal cations, lithium, sodium, or potassium, are soluble, as well as all ammonium-containing compounds, and there are no exceptions to this rule. The same can be said for acetates and for nitrates. Halide ions are also all soluble in water, except for halides of silver and halides of lead, as well as fluorides of group 2 metal cations like barium. So barium fluoride, for example, is an exception which is insoluble. Sulfates are all soluble, except for silver, barium, calcium, and lead. The solubility rules also tell us which compounds are mostly insoluble. Carbonate, phosphate, and sulfide-containing compounds are mostly insoluble, except for compounds of these anions with group 1 metal cations or ammonium. If we remember, all group 1 metal cations and ammonium-containing compounds are soluble. Hydroxides are also insoluble, except for those of group 1 metal hydroxides. The Nessa data sheet provides you with a KSP value for a variety of different compounds. KSP is a value which is a solubility product, and it tells us what the solubility of the compound will be. This will be explored in more detail in Module 5 of the HSC Chemistry Syllabus. As an easy rule, compounds which have a small KSP value, such as barium phosphate, are more insoluble, and those with a higher KSP on the list, such as barium hydroxide, is going to be sparingly soluble to insoluble in water. In this example, silver nitrate is added to potassium chloride solution. First off, we can write our equation for this ion exchange reaction. Silver nitrate, AgNO3, which is aqueous, is reacted with potassium chloride, KCl, this is also aqueous, for the formation of AgCl plus KNO3. At the moment, we are unsure about what states the silver chloride and potassium nitrate are in. So we need to remember, all nitrates are soluble. This means that potassium nitrate is going to be in the aqueous state. 
Furthermore, all halides, so those including chlorine, bromine, or fluorine, are soluble except for silver halides. And that means this must be a solid. For our next question, we are going to be writing the equation for a reaction between barium hydroxide and magnesium sulfate. All hydroxides, with the exception of group 1 hydroxides and barium, are insoluble, meaning that magnesium hydroxide, being neither a group 1 nor barium element, is going to be in the solid state. Sulfates of barium are also insoluble, which means that we have two precipitates. We have the precipitation of barium sulfate and the precipitation of magnesium hydroxide. This question asks what solution we can add to potassium sulfate to produce a precipitate. Write a chemical equation to represent this reaction. We already know that barium sulfate is going to be a precipitate and barium hydroxide is able to be dissolved in water. So we can use this information from previous questions to answer this one. So barium hydroxide plus potassium sulfate will form the barium sulfate salt. And potassium hydroxide. We know that potassium hydroxide is soluble because it is a group 1 hydroxide. When we are writing equations for precipitation reactions, there are three methods in which we are able to express what reactions are occurring. They are the neutral species equation, the complete ionic equation, and the net ionic equation. The neutral species equation is a type of equation which denotes all chemical species which do not carry any electrical charge, meaning that they are neutral. The example of the neutral species equation for the precipitation between silver nitrate and sodium chloride is demonstrated in this equation below. The aqueous state of an ionic substance tells us that it has been dissolved in water. When ionic substances become dissolved in water, the latter structure breaks down and the ions which they are consisted of are going to disperse uniformly throughout the solution. The aqueous state of an ionic substance tells us that it's been dissolved in water. When ionic substances become dissolved, the latter structure is going to break down for the ionic substance and the ions which they are going to consist of are going to disperse uniformly throughout that solution. Therefore, we can write out a complete ionic equation to denote all ions which exist in solution. So Ag, NO3, which is aqueous, is going to have Ag and NO3 ions. NaCl, which is aqueous, is going to have Na and Cl ions. And then AgCl, which is insoluble, will remain as a solid. Then we also have the sodium and nitrate ions which are dispersed in the solution. What we should notice from the complete ionic equation is that both NO3 nitrate and Na plus sodium are both going to exist on the reactant and the product side. The reason for this is because they do not participate in the reaction themselves. We call these types of ions spectator ions. When asked to give the net ionic equation for a particular reaction, we leave out these spectator ions and only give the participant ions for the particular reaction. In this example, equal volumes of barium chloride and sodium phosphate are mixed. Write a complete and net ionic equation for this reaction. So when we write the complete ionic equation, we are going to need to balance the ions that are in the equation. So it's easy for us to first write the neutral species equation out and then balance that first. So barium chloride BaCl2, this is in the aqueous state, plus sodium phosphate Na3PO4, this is also in the aqueous state, is mixed and it forms barium phosphate, so this is Ba3PO42, this is solid, plus sodium chloride, which is going to be aqueous, NaCl. Aqueous. We know that barium phosphate is a solid because this is an insoluble salt. Balancing our equation, put a 3 here, put a 6 here, and we put a 2 here, and our equation has now been balanced. 
So from here, what we are able to do is we are able to write out the complete ionic equation for this. So we have 3Ba2 plus because of this in aqueous. We also have 6Cl minus here. Here we have 6Na plus. And we have 2PO4s here. Then what we have is we're going to create this. This is a salt. This is in solid. So we're going to keep that as a solid form. BA3PO42. Plus here we have 6 NAs and 6 CLs. So 6 Na plus plus 6 Cl minus. So this is our complete ionic equation. And remember that the net ionic equation is not going to involve any spectator ions. What we notice is that the 6Na plus is there in both the reactant and the product side. And the same goes for Cl. So these two are our spectator ions. So in our complete ionic equation, all we'll be including is this, the 3Ba2 plus and the 2PO4 3 minus to form this salt. So net ionic equation will be 3 Ba2 plus, this is aqueous, plus 2PO4, 3 minus aqueous to form Ba3, PO4, 2, and this is our salt. This is our final net ionic equation. In this next example, it says equal volumes of barium hydroxide and magnesium sulfate are mixed. Write a complete and net ionic equation for this reaction. If we remember, this is the same example that we looked at earlier, where we had the formation of two precipitates. So BaOH2, barium hydroxide, this is aqueous, plus MgSO4, this is also going to be aqueous. We're creating BaSO4, this is our first precipitate, and our second one is Mg. OH2. So looking at this, we should write our complete ionic equation doing the same thing that we did before. So we have Ba2 plus, this is aqueous, plus we have 2OH minus here. Remember, OH minus is a polyatomic ion, which means that we treat it as its own group, plus Mg2 plus, plus SO4, 2 minus, sorry, I forgot to add aqueous state here. And from here, we are going to be making BaSO4 solid plus MgOH2. This is also solid. Now, when we move on to the net ionic equation, remember that net ionic equation is where we remove the spectator ions. In this case, because we are forming both precipitates, What's happening is we are actually involving each and every one of these ions in the final reaction. Because of this, our complete ionic equation and our net ionic equation are going to be the same. So these are our final solutions.